There's nothing more inspiring than hearing real people overcome real challenges to get the results they want, especially when those are the same results you'd like to see in your own life. That's why in this bonus episode, we are going deep with another incredible woman, our very own Catherine Froggett. Welcome to the Feel Better Live Free podcast brought to you by Thinlicious. I'm your host, Ruth Sukup, and here we'll talk about everything from the science of weight loss to practical tips for making your health a priority in the midst of a busy life. It's a little bit nerdy, a little bit funny, and a little bit revolutionary. So buckle up, friend, because it's about to get real. Hey there, and welcome back to the Feel Better Live Free podcast. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ruth Sukup, and I'm the founder of Thinlicious and the creator of the Thin Adapted System, as well as the New York Times bestselling author of seven books. And in this special bonus episode, we are taking a deep dive into what transforming your life through adopting the Thinlicious lifestyle actually looks like by sitting down to chat with one of our amazing Thinlicious coaches, Catherine Froggett. Catherine has been a lead coach in our TAS program since 2022, but her own journey to get healthy started with a shocking diagnosis, one that would ultimately upend her entire life. But as always, it's better to hear her talk about it in her own words. So here's what she had to say. Catherine, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to talk to you. Oh, Ruth, it's always a pleasure. And you know, we work busy, busy lives and um, I'm so honored to be here to share and have a chat with you. I know this is going to be so good because even though we like work together in theory, we don't actually work face-to-face very often. So, or meet face-to-face, you're busy serving all of our amazing clients in the program and, and just sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom. And I'm so excited to talk about that, but let's just back up, start with a little background. So tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, how you got into this world. Oh, wow. Where do I start? Okay, I'll try not to do this long story, but I am currently living in beautiful New Zealand. Uh, I have been in New Zealand for about 11 years. And so if some of you guys might might hear like my sort of Kiwi accent, which isn't sounding so Kiwi, which is so funny, um, because I'm originally born and bred from Singapore. And so some people who have been to Singapore, you guys are probably very well traveled these days, especially after, you know, after the whole world gone back to normal. Um, Singapore slang is pretty much predominant in my upbringing. So um, I've got two kids. I'm a busy mom with two businesses that I'm operating and my kids are now no longer really little. They are 11 and 14. And I'm married to a professional chef who keeps me very much interested in my food and cooking and just spending way too much time in the kitchen. So we love cooking. I love it. I love it. Okay. So let's talk about your background a little bit because you are one of our original coaches for TAS. Um, And well, are you not from the very, very beginning? Because you kind of came through like a little bit of a, how shall we say it? A detour? (laughs) Is that the right Yeah. Beautiful detour. (laughs) Talk about how, how you, how you came to be such an amazing coach in our program. Oh, look, um, I, I I guess I should give you a little bit of backstory as well. That's all right, Rose. Yes. Um, um, I'm in 2016, I received a cancer diagnosis and my past life, like before that diagnosis, I was a really ambitious, chronic perfectionist, high achiever, um, in the whole world of business development. And so, um, and, and I don't know if you guys have, you know, come from a very big city, like Singapore is a small but big city. So the, the, the vibe has always been very competitive. And also when I lived in that kind of space, I was just constantly chasing success. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess the cancer diagnosis in 2016 in January really was a wake up call for me. Um, and I decided to have a complete career change after I finished all of my treatments. So I had I had a surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, hormonal therapy, and then I didn't finish and get discharged till six years after the diagnosis. And so in between that time, I really decided to dive deep into understanding what went wrong, unravel 
my why and my health journey. And it got me um, on this um, certification, which is run and operated by Precure in New Zealand. Um, and then I graduated and I'm part of that graduates page. And then I saw the previous owner Libby's post inviting um, graduates to apply for the position um, to work with her and to work with other people who are struggling with metabolic health. And she was just one of the um, pioneers in New Zealand, you know, who set up. And so I was just like, oh, wow, that's me. That was my massive calling. And I applied and and I was so thrilled that I was shortlisted. And and then you came along, Ruth, and, and you decided yeah. that, oh, my gosh, this is a fantastic opportunity. And I was just inherited and adopted as the child of TAS. You I are. hope that sounds right. <laughs> I, I love that description. Yes. So for those of you listening who don't know what we're talking about or who Libby is. So Libby was the previous owner of a company called Ditch the Carbs. And she owned that company for, gosh, 10 years at least. She had a program. Mm-hmm. It was and very, it was very aligned with everything that we were doing with Finlicious. And I met her through the low carb living summit that we hosted back in January of 2023. You've probably heard some guests talk about that. Um, and it was an amazing summit and she's an amazing person. And she, we got to talking and she's like, I'm actually wanting to sell my business and I'm looking for somebody. And I was like, well, we're so aligned. And I would, I think we might be interested. And so we ended up purchasing ditch the carbs and, and then merging it with Finlicious. Um, in 2023. And that's why this podcast was originally called ditch the carbs before we changed the name. And, um, and, and so it all just sort of worked. And so, and Catherine came along as part of the deal. And so we inherited, we adopted Catherine as part of it, but it's been so wonderful. And I'm so like, it's been probably, I would say like one of the most serendipitous pieces of that whole transfer. I had never bought a business, a pre-existing business before. So there was lots of learning involved in in merging those two companies, but, um, yeah, this has been such just a wonderful part. And now it's been, gosh, two years already since I know where's the time gone, Ruth, like the time go. I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, we've been so thrilled to have you and you were such a, have been such a huge piece of just developing our program and then developing the certification and helping to train all of our other coaches and, yeah, it's just been, it's just been so, so great. So I would love to back up and talk a little bit more about your cancer journey, if you don't mind, and just like how that shift happened into just making you like, like making you rethink your whole approach to not just your health, but your whole life. Yeah. I think it really, you know, the diagnosis really threw me off because even though like I kind of always thought that I was healthy and I put my you know if you guys can watch my it's like I thought I'm healthy right I'm healthy you know healthy is so subjective um and when I actually felt that sharp pain over lunch you know it was just like another day my daughter was like really little and I was still breastfeeding her and she was on the chair and my husband was playing games in in the cafe with my son and then I was just trying to cut my lunch and then I it was just this really sharp pain on my right breast and it just made me drop my knife and I think you know I I probably speak for a lot of busy moms who work or run their own business and we just forget about ourselves right mm-hmm. and that moment I was like this is not right but then I kind of gave myself the excuse it must be just my breast because I'm breastfeeding mm-hmm. and then I kind of just brushed it off but my husband kind of reminded me he goes you should get that checked out and normally he's very you know he doesn't he trusts that I can make my own decisions but I think that morning he was like, nah, you really need to do something about it. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And then that was December in 2015. And no, you know how hard it is to get into a general practitioner to get an appointment. So I waited about two weeks before I could get in. And that was the week of Christmas. No kidding. Everyone was not interested in seeing GPs. And that was the only time I could get in. And, um, and she reassured me don't worry, Catherine, it's just a cyst. All right, you've got nothing to be concerned about. But what I'll do is just for safety, I'll write you a um, script to go and get a mammogram, a scan. um, And that would be the first week back in business on, I think it was the 4th of January or something. Anyways, I walked into the the mammogram all by myself thinking, it's just a cyst, it's nothing. Didn't want to worry my husband. 
And I think as soon as it's they started scanning more and more, and they go, oh, hang on a minute, we need to take more more angles, and oh, we need you to see the radiologist who's on site. And I could just feel, and I still remember this day, like that, the 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 twist in my gut, and that brought up that cold sweat in my body. I was just like panicking, and I was on my own. So the story went that the next day I went for a biopsy and I was probably crying all night. I didn't really sleep very well that night. And I, all I could think about was con- completely just like, I'm going to die. And I think that moment itself really taught me the value of life. Like I knew I value my life, right? But at that point, when I was sitting there thinking about my own mortality, mm-hmm. something really shifted in my in me, you know, and I decided my life's got to change in order for me to improve my health outcomes. If I don't change anything, nothing would change. And so that's when I decided I'm going to change. And how do I change? I kind of just went through a coaching certification in order for me to implement what I'm learning and doing that for myself and being my own sort of own, I guess, created my own story around my health and what it meant for me. And then from there, when I'm ready, I came out to the world and say, look, I want to help other women. I want to help other women prevent what I've gone through. Yes, that's amazing. At, like, as you were saying that, I, I had this flashback to this moment. I don't think I've ever talked about this before where I had this in, and I don't know like how much you know about my story. In, in my 20s, I went through this terrible depression yeah. and attempted suicide multiple times. And um, you know, finally it was like two and a half years in and out of hospitals. And then, um, finally was like getting back on my feet. Right. And I was about to go to law school and I was here in Florida with, with my husband. He wasn't my husband yet at that point, but we were, we were in Florida and we went through hurricane Charlie and hurricane Charlie was, and we were the eye of the storm and we were in the closet and windows were breaking and our roof was coming off. And like, it was terrifying. Right. And I remember screaming underneath the mattress. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I want to go to law school. I don't. And it was such a moment, like what you're talking about of realizing like, this could be it for me right now. And I finally, like after having tried to die for three years, I, I know that's not what I want now. I want to live and I want to live and do the things. And like, I went on to not do like hate law school and right. Like there were so many other yeah. pieces of that story afterwards, but in that moment, I realized like, I'm, I'm choosing life right now. And that sounds like, like, obviously it looked, your story looked very different, but it's that moment where you have to decide for yourself, like, this is, this is my time. This is what I, this is where I'm going to put my line in the sand and decide what I want for my life, which is very cool. Yeah. And I'm so glad you and I are sitting together and talking about this because, you know, I really want to, I really want to spread this word. It's like we've started sometimes we're so busy and we started just normalizing so many things that, ah, you know, it will just pass. It's just nothing. But had I not really taken the advice and gone to the GP, had I not really allowed myself the moment of just being curious, right? And I know, I mean, hey, this is this is a really scary situation because I what I actually walked into, it, it, it just brought that fear but that fear really helped me get clear on my purpose and I was a I was a very young mom with two young kids and I still remember like sitting in the car after the biopsy and had of having to have to wait 10 days for the results I think that was the most ridiculous like painful 10 days for the results um but I've I kind of just coerced the radiologist who took the biopsy and I said please just tell me what you think right he goes i'm not supposed to you know that i say yeah but i it would drive me insane to wait for 10 days i already i couldn't sleep like i was thinking the worst right um and he said look it looks malignant so um but he held my hand and he goes catherine there are 26 types of breast cancers you could just have the good type and maybe not as invasive and and i held on to that yeah. Like he was really empathetic and, oh. you know, and, and that was kind of my 
slow transition towards really learning who I am and you know a lot of other stories came around and I know we've got we've, we don't have a lot of time but if I have days with you Ruth I'll be telling you like um I think I was really ashamed to announce that I had cancer because it was such a it was such a thing like I was such a high achiever I was such a perfectionist that even for me to share something like that with the world it was like I can't because what will people think of me like yeah. I'm not perfect I'm not I'm weak and my body's failed me like you know yeah. this cannot be possible I can't share it and it took me three weeks for me to tell my mom in wow. Singapore yeah wow wow you know there's a lot of parallels I think to that um with people who are struggling with their their weight right like all the shame yeah. that comes from not wanting to talk about that journey, not wanting to tell anybody you're on a diet, not wanting to tell anybody you're trying to fix it, not wanting to acknowledge that, you know, that like there's a problem, right? Like I remember that for myself and, and all the years that I struggled of just this, like, there's something wrong with me and I don't know how to fix it and I can't fix it, but I can't talk about it. And it's so lonely to be in that place of not, of not feeling like you can like share enough to be vulnerable with other people. Cause that's the, like part of the power of, hum of human connection and yeah. it's so necessary for healing. So how did you get past that? Um, I, I told my husband, I said, how do I, how do I do this? Right. And I still remember because we're living in New Zealand, I've got no family around me. Mm -hmm. So my family is all in Singapore. And so I just went like, how am I going to do this? Because my my husband's a professional chef and he works shifts and I've got two young kids. So, and, and me with treatments and the beautiful thing. And I think there's a lot of similarities between us and in the States because we're, we're like in a small town and you have to go like an hour and a bit and drive to a, a main hospital where they will give me my very much intensive first four doses of chemotherapy. And so mm -hmm. I won't be able to drive back and I need to have like people driving me and all that. And I was just like hard against having a driver drive me. I want to have someone close to me, you know? Um, and so my husband's like, you've got to tell your family, like, you know, they, they will have to come and support you and you can't really just not say anything. Um, and I guess it was because looking at my kids, it was my kids. They, they, they really, really were my sole reason for living. Um, I love my husband, don't get me wrong, but my kids, you know, like they, they yeah. just really need me. And I just look at them and I go, I will do this. I will do this because I want my kids to be in good care and I want to be able to go for my treatments and not have to worry about them. And I guess when I needed to make that phone call, it was really difficult because I know how my mother is. And true enough, what I expected was, you know, it happened because I rang, I rang and I got on the phone. I said, Hey mom, you know, I really need to tell you something. And she goes, Oh, okay. What? You know, like, and I'm like, oh, I went to the hospital and I've got cancer. And then there was dead silence for a while. And then she started crying mm -hmm. and that was it. Like she, 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 she didn't she say gonna respond. Yeah. Cause I know what she'll be thinking. She'll be like, what did I do wrong? that yes. gave you cancer right mm -hmm. and that's we all do that it's like whoa so, yeah. so i said mom i'm all right and then the next thing was a kicker for me to ha actually have to articulate mom i need you here you know because i've always been someone that did everything myself like it wasn't gonna be anything like i i just don't want to ask for help i've always done everything myself furiously independent but um that phone call i said mom i need you and she goes okay i'll come I'll organize tickets. I'll get your dad because I hate flying because we'll do it together. And so the two of them came and Aww. they stayed for about two months, almost three months. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing to have that kind of support. Awesome. Massive. Yeah. Massive. Wow. wow. Yeah. So how has that transformed you now? Like as a health coach, how do you pull that, that experience in and how has that helped you to transform other people's lives? Yeah. What a great question, Rose. Coaching really is trying to hold a space for the client to find within themselves the power they have. Mm. My love for coaching is because I really love empowering other women and building that awareness and curiosity and helping them on that journey. It's not about me trying to tell them what to do. It really is just, you know, being in that passenger seat, letting them know that they're not alone. Like we're doing this together. 
you know and yeah i have my lived experience but all of that knowledge all of that theory all of that really takes courage for us to try and get in that seat and drive right whatever that might be you know in that journey together and so for me it was because i was so disconnected with burnout i i struggled with burnout for a long time and and lots of backstory i was quite a traumatized child myself and so i guess it was just a lot of healing on a lot of layers and yes i've had a cancer diagnosis but it really had to you know it was that motivating factor for me to dig deep and so my role as a coach it really is to hold that safe space for the client to know that hey guess what um you can do this but let's go slowly or however fast you want let's work on one aspect at a time and know that you are not alone and my success can be your success yes yeah i love that yeah it's 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 amazing to watch that like to be to get to have this kind of view that i get right like the bird's eye view of all the things and all the transformations that are happening and just all the bits and pieces and i don't i don't feel like i can take any credit for it right like i'm i i like i like put that this thing together and now all it's had this whole yeah. it has a life of its own i feel like yeah. with our community and our coaches and and it just is it's amazing to watch because it's not really anything except the like the realization for women and it all happens at different at a different pace for every single person but that realization that they have the power inside them to do yes. to do this work and and when you watch you like we literally get a front row seat to watching that light bulb come on where all of a sudden they go I get it like I can do this yeah and oh my gosh it's like it's the it's the coolest coolest yeah. thing it really is it's the, it's the coolest thing coolest thing and also that's the magic and that's what i call dancing with the client right we're in that dance together like suddenly we've got flow right we're doing this and 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 the magic happens when the client actually sees that and she goes wow you know for the first time i feel like i've got a voice or for the first time i feel like i know what i want or for the first time i can inspire my husband to do this with me Oh, wow. You know, like, and so, I mean, it's like going back to, you know, my why, right? My why is my kids. My why is changing the way we live. One client, one group, one program, one community at a time, right? Mm -hmm. One breath at a time, because it's like, how can we build this into this naturally evolving journey for the client to just become successful, but choosing the way it is like for her, right? Yeah. Not yeah, as yeah. telling her, look, just do this, do that, and do that. Like, can we just really help her see that she is so worthy of something bigger than what she ever thought of? Yes. Oh, I love that. So I I do feel like we could keep talking about this. I know. <laughs> but for the sake of time, yeah. what, like, going back to people who are just getting started, right? Like listening to this right now, thinking, do I or don't I? Like I hear this, but I don't know if I'm there yet. Like what what is your philosophy, advice, kind of feeling around like how how does someone know that they're ready? I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you guys, but you don't know until you do it. You don't know until you try it. I didn't know I was able to survive eight years from my diagnosis until now. But all that eight years took a lot of doing, a lot of implementation. And I say a lot, but that means it's small chunks and over time. Yes. Really, we need to give ourselves grace. And if we have the growth mindset, and I talk about this a lot, and I know you talk about this a lot as well, Ruth. But when we adopt the growth mindset, we allow ourselves to fail forward and failure. Don't let's not let's take away the whole stigma about failure being a bad thing, failure, mistakes, whatever you want to call it, hurdles, bump on the road. Let's just say they give us experience and we can add that and convert that into wisdom. 
Yes. Oh, we don't know until we try. Yes. And you don't want to have to wait for a cancer diagnosis no. or a type two diabetes diagnosis or whatever it is to be the wake up call, a hurricane and, and hiding in the closet, right? Like you don't want and need to wait for the wake up call to like actually start taking action. I think that's the, that's the, yeah. that's that like, you, because sometimes it might be too late and you don't know yeah. when that is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And for anyone you guys hearing, like listening to this and, and, and hear it from me, if I could turn back the clock, I wish someone would have told me that I have metabolic syndrome, but because I'm not obese or fat or, or I don't look like I've got someone with metabolic syndrome, people just assume, oh, you're fine. You're mm -hmm. fine. And there's nothing wrong with you. You don't look sick. But the thing is, I wish I could have been taught back then and, and be able to prevent this. And so I guess really is, there is no perfect time for change. I know change is really scary. It's really scary. True. Yeah, but let's not wait because what we're we waiting for, it would just not get any better if we don't change something. Right. Yeah. And that's I, what you said is true too. Like it doesn't have to happen all at once. And I, mm. I like if, and I'm sure this, you would say the same for your, your journey. Like when I look back now and because I, sometimes I feel like when I talk about all these different things that I do that are just normal to me because they're habits and they're, it's established and because I, I can't walk in the grocery store and look at a, the cereal aisle and not think poison, 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 right? Like I don't even, it wouldn't even occur to me to buy things that I used to like buy with coupons, right? And like yeah. stock my pantry full of and think that I was the greatest thing ever because I got 10 boxes of cereal for $2. But now I like, I would, I don't care if somebody was paying me to take them. I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't eat that because it just isn't, I know yeah. it's not serving my body. And yeah. yet like these, where I am now has been a, a journey to get to here. And it, and that's how it can be for, for everyone, right? Like you, you make small changes a little bit of, at a time because big changes never happen all at once. They are only the yeah. result of, sm of small steps taken consistently over time. And and as long as you can kind of get that in, into that growth mindset, like you were talking about, it's, that's where the true transformation happens. Yeah. And I always like to say, you know, we're, I'm always a work in progress guys, right? In order for me to coach, I need to work on myself mm -hmm. and I'm always going to be a lifelong learner because that's the way I am. And, and when we're on, you know, when we've got this beautiful time on earth, what changes can I make? And I always tell our members, like our Thinlicious members, I said, yeah, you know, I know, I, I totally get it. That is really enough wrecking going to a social party and thinking people will judge me because I don't want to take, eat their pie or, you know, drink alcohol. But think about who we could be inspiring. Right. There could be someone in that room or around that table could be contemplating, hey, is this really the way I want to be eating? Do I, how long do I want to be feeling like this? Or how long do I want to be struggling with my weight and sleep and all sorts of stuff? Like what we say, because you're a change maker, you could be inspiring her to say, Hey, tell me more. Right. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I mean, just go out there and do it. Don't think it, we, we overthink things. So yeah, that's good. Final words. Don't overthink yeah. it. <laughs> just get started. Just one little small change. It's all it yeah. takes. I yeah, love it. We don't know what we don't know. So let's try it. Let's do this together. I love it. Catherine, thank you so much for being here today. This was such a wonderful conversation. So, so good to hear your story and just thank like, you. you're amazing. And you bring so much to our community and our program and I'm just so grateful for you. Oh, Ruth, I'm so honored to be able to share a snippet of my life and, um, you know, to share and inspire others. I'm very inspired by you and what you do for our community. And so, you know, women helping women. And I think we're, we're in a really, really amazing community and space down here together. So thank you. It's You're been welcome. great. Thank you. Don't you just love Catherine's outlook on life? It's so good and so inspiring. And she is absolutely right. You just need to start. And friends, that brings me to the end of this bonus episode, but I will be back with another new episode very soon.